My name is Joe Pacheco. I'm 88 years old. I was born and raised in King City, California, a little farm town in the Salinas Valley, to Manuel and Caroline Pacheco. We lived in King City all our lives. We had a nice big family, and they all went to school in King City High School. We all served in the service. My oldest brother was in World War II. I was in World War II in Korea. My younger brother was three years in Korea, so we did our share. And my folks came from Hawaii in 1914 and raised a family. There was about 10 of us, and we all helped them when we built the house at 516 North Vanderhurst Street, where all the neighbors were. It was during the Depression time, so everybody had to chip in, and all of us kids worked in different jobs. The girls worked in the theater, and we took our little red wagon and went and got grass for the rabbits so we could sell the rabbits to the grocery stores and make a little money for food and stuff, it was very tough. And there was 10 of us in the family. And they had, my folks had adopted my two cousins from my dad's sister because they died in the flu of 1918. And it was tough times, but we played hide and go seek at night and had fun with each other and shot rubber guns at each other's. And, and then at Christmas time, the theater and the, the schools and stuff, they all got together gave popcorn free and, and Christmas packages for all the, the poor people, which we all were. In the summertime, we had the King City Rodeo. And we had a lot of fun. The carnival came in there and we had the big giant Ferris, Ferris wheel and, and then they'd, they'd have little Cracker Jacks and you get a five cents and you buy a Cracker Jack and, and some of them had little gifts inside. And we used to think we really got a big deal. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, when Daddy would come home from work and he'd go to the grocery store and get what little bit he wanted to buy, and he'd go behind the store and get all the old lettuce and vegetables. And they'd bring it home to make soup and they called it week-long soup. And uh, boy, you never complained either. You never had to say, what are we having for supper or dinner or whatever. We ate it and liked it. The depression was very, very tough. Uh, we had not very much clothes and, and they'd bring clothes and they'd have to sew buttons and patches on our stuff. And, but we always helped out going and getting the, the feed for the rabbits and doing our chores. And I, I myself didn't get to play a lot of sports because I had to go get the stuff for the animals. And we played cops and robbers and cowboys and Indians and all the neighbor kids had come over there and had our cap guns and, and we had lots of fun. And we'd play hide and go seek and go running and hiding in the lumber. And Mike Rochella was a crippled up old man, worked for the pg &E for years. And uh, they had fruit trees all in there and we used to go at night and steal the apricots and the apples and the peaches. And then in the afternoon when we come over from school, we'd tie strings on the stem and we'd float them in the irrigation ditches to get them nice and cold. And we'd eat the, the fruit and we'd steal the grapes and, and the peaches and the pears. And, so we all, all the neighbors got involved with that and he'd come out there running at us after us with the strap to try to catch us, but we were too fast for him. Her name was Josephine Pura. I met her and they, she came in the bus. Good-looking lady, boy. And I said, boy, that gal's for me. We went to all the football games, the basketball games, and, and uh, Jojo and I stayed together all through school. 
And then we used to meet after school and go to a place called McGuire's Fountain. And we all went and got milkshakes and ham sandwiches. And I'd treat Georgia to a 25 cent ham and cheese sandwich. And uh, there was a gal that she always wanted to get in my car. And I had my 28 Chevy and so I took the box off the back and made a, a rumble seat. And so a lot of guys rode in the back and she always tried to get in quick. Then Jojo didn't get to sit down there, so I hooked up a little coil battery from a Model T. And whenever she'd come in there to sit in there, I'd turn on the, the coil and it would give her a shock on the rear end. And so she didn't sit in there anymore so that I could sit with Jojo. And growing up in King City, we had some real tough times and there was a lot of us are very poor, and uh, we went through school and we studied, and we most of us all graduated and everything else. And, and then the good times and all our childhood went to hell fast, and along came World War II. There was a monsoon going on and it was raining cats and dogs and we were getting wet and oh, it was terrible. We had to climb the ladders to get off the ship and because there was no way to get out so we climbed off the side of the ship and we finally got on the landing craft. They took us into the area where we were going and they circle around and they keep circling around and circling around till they find a break to go in and, and head into land and then we there was some fog coming in there and, and sometimes they got a little close to the beach and some of the shells come in there pretty close. There must have been seven or eight thousand ships out there, aircraft carriers and battled every kind of ship and you can see the mountains and the jungles and we knew it was going to be a tough situation. But anyway, we knew it was going to be tough going in, and so they told us not to jump off the edge and go over the side because it's too dangerous. And, and uh, I don't know how many was on there, but they had two Navy guys bringing us in. And the first place we came into, I don't even know the name of the place. And, and we came in there, and they opened up the front of the ship, and we just... Everybody started hollering and making all kinds of noise. And we ran and ran to the, the beach and hit the sand and went into the, where all the jungles are looking for cover and stuff. And you can hear all the noise and the weapons going off. And, and I was scared, man. I was scared. I partly crying and guys were saying prayers and rosaries and everything it was and somebody would go down and they'd call for medics and stuff <laughs> They told us to make a lot of noise to get the, the adrenaline going because we were so scared and, and we were all young. I mean, everybody was young. If a guy was 25 years, he was an old man. And you, you, when you went in there, you didn't know who was what. And, and I always went with a, myself. I was so damn scared. I went, I always looked for a sergeant because they had the knowledge and, and I followed in his footsteps. Some of them got hurt. And, some of them didn't, and some didn't make it, but uh, that's what you did, and you run for the cover, and then you run for the nearest trees, because they had been shelling the islands a lot. And then they took all the cover. There was no cover, so you had 
you know, out in the open and it was kind of bad. Then you maybe a, a group of guys would come in there with a, a 50 caliber and throw it on the ground right next to where you are. And, and you know that they're, they're looking for those guys and so you get the hell away from them because they, they get knocked off pretty fast. And some of the guys got it. And you, you just wonder how come you didn't get it, but man, some of those shells come off the damn close. It just scared the pee right out of me, I'll tell you. You'd be going through the jungle in there, and, then, and there'd be guys coming out at, at you, and, and you, a lot of hand-to-hand -hand places in there. And so you had to run and hide for cover and, and wait till you got a chance to to protect yourself and it was it was hard and you put your bayonet on the end of your M1 rifle and we'd run for the next hole and and hope to God you didn't meet up with anybody the enemies in there but a couple of the guys got from behind them they got bass stuck in the backs and stuff they're scared and you're just you don't know what to do and the, nobody to tell you what to do you just had to watch for your own self and there was a I don't know, a couple thousand guys on the beach there. And it, it was, it was just terrible. It was damn tough, I'll tell you. It's just somebody moved, you just fired, and you don't know what what size of guy he was or anything, and you just hoped to God, and you just checked to make sure you you got him, and he was gone. But that's that's it. And then you just kept going. And but the noises, Jesus, the noises, you don't know where they're coming from. You hear them whistling and, and things going around you, explosives and stuff. But the big weapons, when they came in, that was bad because it would take maybe a dozen guys at a time. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't very good. But that's enough. So we went through those islands in Leyte and Okinawa and we took them over fast. And then the next thing we knew, everybody was firing their weapon because on Mount Suribachi, the Marines, they were putting the flag up. So the ships were all blowing the horns and the guys were firing their weapons and everything. And not long after that, the war ended. Then I knew that my war days were over. lifetime I made a lot of mistakes and hollered at people and stuff at least I never gave my kids a, a lick and I just talked to them and they got the message and there's a lot of things that I didn't do that I should have done I maybe didn't take you fishing and we had to work but we had some tough times to to get through so I hope that a lot of my ideas that I helped you with uh, helped you grow up and get some knowledge because it was tough I know we had to wear the same pants. Many, many, many <laughs> pants were handed down, and there were so many patches that looked like knee pads on our pants. And I've loved you all the time. I may not have shown it, but it was always there. And Mom and I, we we done a lot without a lot of things that you didn't know about, and to help you out. So uh, we hope that later on in life you'll realize that because. We all were a wonderful family and we all got along. You didn't see a lot of the neighbors do what we used to do. We had our nice get-togethers, big celebrations all the time. Christmas and Thanksgiving. When there was a birthday, we had parties. Mom made cakes. And so everybody was treated good. And everybody was nice. We had our fights, but we always got back to normal. 
mom and I, we've loved you, we felt that way, and everything we do and have done was for your benefits. When Susan was born, she got that big red spot on her head. First thing we did was take and go get it from a specialist. We got rid of it, she looked beautiful. David had his feet, we had to fix his feet. We don't even care about the money, it was for you guys. Everything we did was for you guys. May not was the happy days about it, but that's the way it is. So just keep that way and just remember the rest of your life. Mama and I love you. Okay? Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>